claiming to have turned the smartphone market upside down, this is the Helio X10. So this is my in-depth gaming test. I'm actually using the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2, which combines the X10 with 2GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, and we're going to be testing a series of increasingly more demanding games. So to begin with, Geometry Dash, and this is a good representation of a standard 2D title. There's not too much going on here at all. There's a little bit of physics, a little bit of sort of 2D motion, but apart from that, this is a very simple game. And so as you would expect, especially on a 1080p panel, this is running totally fine. Literally any 2D title will be absolutely pasted by the X10. It poses no challenge at all. So for those of you who are familiar with mobile architecture, the X10, otherwise known as the MT6795, actually runs eight simultaneous A57 cores, making it a true octa-core processor. It can range anywhere from 1.8 gigahertz to 2.4. And contrary to ARM's big little architecture, in this situation all 8 cores can be on at once. Although I have to say, very few games actually utilise it, especially to its full potential. Smashy Road, an example of a solid 2.5D game with nice art aesthetics, also runs flawlessly. There is zero problems, zero glitches, and while this does somewhat depend on the optimization of the game, you shouldn't find any problems at all here. And while to some people this won't be an issue at all, the Helio X10 is built on the slightly older 28 nanometer process compared to chips like the Snapdragon 810, which are built on the 20 nanometer process. What this means essentially is that they get less transistors in the same amount of space, and so it's basically a little bit less efficient. Moving up the gaming ladder, we have Need for Speed, and this is a brand new title just released on Android, and alongside Asphalt 8 and Real Racing 3, this probably competes to be the best looking racing title on the system, so it's obviously a pretty good test in terms of graphics and performance. It looks fantastic, 1080p, sharp, crystal clear, and very, very smooth. I was impressed at the way the Helio X10 handled this, and in some cases on the Redmi Note 2, which is the phone I'm using here, it actually outperformed the OnePlus 2, a smartphone which costs more than twice as much and sports a Snapdragon 810 chip, which is essentially made for much higher end smartphones. Now one thing which really struck me after spending quite a while with the Helio X10 is how consistently it performs, and it consistently performs well whereas with chips like the Snapdragon 810 or the Snapdragon 808, or basically any other chip which adopts a big little architecture where it has to kind of switch between cores, it seems to be that this is just not quite optimized to the best that it could be. And so those phones, even though they are technically on paper more powerful, they just don't quite live up to expectations, whereas the X10 is very, very simple in architecture. It's just eight cores that are just on all the time, and they adjust frequency depending on when they're in demand. And I think as a result of this, it actually provides very smooth gameplay. Because when you're actually playing games, you tend to notice the minimum frame rate just as much as you do the average. And so there's much less frame rate dips on this. So this will actually be a combination of both Xiaomi, who've spent time optimizing the chip and making sure that it runs well with its MIUI operating system, as well as the chip itself, which is obviously ensured that it can handle its thermal capability so it's not overheating and doesn't need to throttle back. So having said this, now we're playing Modern Combat 5, which is possibly the most demanding game on the Android App Store. It's really, really up there, and it looks gorgeous. And to be honest, it's playing very smoothly. But by smoothly, I don't necessarily mean at a solid 60 frames per second, because it's not quite there. It's probably hovering more around 40 to 50, but the reason it actually feels so smooth is because it's consistent. If you have a 60 frame per second game, which keeps dipping to sort of 10 FPS every now and again, that will not feel as smooth as this does, and this is still a really, really playable experience. It's very enjoyable to play. And every now and again, you may actually still see a lag on this. For example, if there's a huge explosion, or all of a sudden a ton of enemies just appear on screen, this is not a perfect processor by any means, but it more than performs its price point. This is appearing in devices costing just just over a hundred pounds. It's clearly not as capable as the Snapdragon 810 or the Exynos 7420, you know, market leaders at the minute, but it's actually extremely consistent and it consistently delivers well. This is a really exciting processor and I can't wait to see where MediaTek goes with this. What do you guys think? Do you own a smartphone or would you own a smartphone with this processor inside? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss and this is Insanely Cool Tech.